The Flash Forge Creator Max is a 3D printer that I can, without any reservation, recommend to you. If you're watching this video because you're looking at this printer and going, uh, I don't know, is this the right one? I will tell you to go ahead and actually spend your money on it because it is a great printer. It can do great things and it's well put together. I absolutely recommend this printer. Now we cool? Do we understand my position on this printer? Good, because I have a laundry list of things to complain about and I really want to get them off my chest. Hey everybody, it's Joe and the Flash Forge Creator Max is a 3D printer that I am way behind on doing the review for, mostly because I couldn't stop printing with this thing long enough to take it out here to tell you guys about it. It's great, and where I praise the JG Maker A5S for enabling me to print bigger things and thus things that I couldn't print before, this machine enables me to print things of a depth that I couldn't before, not a physical depth, but the materials that this machine will enable me and allow me to experiment with and play with is exciting and a lot of fun. Not only does it do PLA, of course, every printer does PLA, but it also does high temp materials like, well, they say it does polycarbonate. I haven't tested it, but I'm looking forward to it. And I have done it with ABS. In fact, one of the first prints that I did, I just threw some flexible filament in there. In fact, I threw Ninja Flex in there, the softest of the flexible filaments. This is a Scozy, the, the Chibimol Scorpion, and it printed perfectly. It printed so good. Like, I didn't even have to change anything or modify anything. I just threw the Ninja Flex in there, told the slicer that I was printing with a flexible filament, and it took it like a champ. So the fact that this machine enables me to print things that I couldn't print before or couldn't print with other cheaper 3D printers is to me very exciting. And that is because this, that entirely happens because this machine is the, what, fifth, sixth generation removed from the Replicator 1. And that machine was direct drive and it was designed for printing different materials. And PLA actually didn't exist when I got this machine. Well, it existed, but we weren't using it for 3D printing. Everybody was printing an ABS on this machine and that has percolated down here, but they've added to it. And yes, this machine prints PLA just fine. Fantastic, in fact. And before I get into my laundry list of complaints, let's talk about accuracy. I started by doing a standard 20 millimeter test print cube and after calibrating my filament to make sure that I wasn't over extruding, I printed my 20 millimeter cube and it was off. It was off in the Y but not in the X which kind of weirded me out and alarmed me and actually put me on the defensive on this machine for quite a while but I decided to give it a bigger test so I printed a 100 millimeter or 10 centimeter cube on the sides and it turns out I was just getting really bad elephant foot because I didn't properly level my build plate. I, it got off again and oh, that was silly of me. But once I measured this 100 millimeter, it was off by just tenths of a millimeter at 100. So with that confidence in mind, I did what I always do. I printed some Legos and sure enough, they snapped together with each other just fine, perfectly, perfectly functional interlocking bricks of their own kind, but do they interlock with the professionally produced store-bought ones? No, they're too loose. That's interesting, I didn't expect that. I expected, since it was slightly smaller, for it to be too tight. Well, that's interesting, but it's still something that I can work with, and it's close enough that I'm very, very happy. So, accuracy, great. Materials, great. So, why is it that it sounds like I'm, I'm winding up for a big exception here to say, yeah, but? Well, as I was reviewing this machine and knowing that I was going to tell you guys about it, I started making a list, a list of things that I felt weren't good about this machine, things that 
I wanted to warn you guys about. And that list just kept growing and growing and growing. Now, some of those things are really quick and simple things to fix, things that this printer can fix. For instance, the spool holder that they send you with. Many 3D printers, they just don't come with a spool holder that works with spools that you get from other manufacturers. They do this so that you have to buy their filament from them. But I mean, it's really not difficult to go out there get a flash forge creator all of the creator line of printers have been needing this upgrade for years and just with a smaller spool pop it in there print it on there actually i should probably make one that just puts that onto the build plate so you don't need supports on that but besides that boom fix the other problem was this this top was really hard to get off and on and the reason being they had put these clips right here that they nestled in here and held the little tabs of this top down now that's good you do want it to have a nice seal on there but you know gravity does a good enough job on here i think i'm going to take these take these off and remodel them so that i can just have it be open so it just kind of nestles it in there but okay that's standard stuff a lot of 3d printers you have to spend a little bit of time making its own upgrades and it's cool that a 3d printer allows you to do that but there was there was a few other things see they called this the max implying maximum implying apex implying that from here it's all downhill and honestly i could think of a ton of things that they could do to improve this 3d printer i mean the build volume alone i brought the Flash Forge Adventure 3 out here, otherwise known as the Monoprice Voxel, to point out that this build volume, 150 millimeters by 150 millimeters, is not big, but it's serviceable. It fits most things. Sure, an Ender 3 or a Prusa i3 has a 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter build volume, but 150, 15 centimeters isn't bad, but this build volume is the same depth it's a little bit wider but it's the same height and that build volume is the exact same build volume on the replicator one it's been nearly a decade and they can't make that build volume any bigger oh and don't even get me started on these hot blocks and nozzles again they're practically the same as the replicator one so if i ever need to change out this nozzle i know what i'm in for i need two tools and three hands to get that nozzle off and put it back on it's it's a pain in the neck have you seen what slice engineering is doing with the mosquito like we could improve this technology not to mention taking both of the extruders and locking them on one carriage. I mean, IDEX is a thing, independent dual extruders that move in and move out. And we do this. This is a thing. Why don't we, why isn't the Max doing this, right? Now, all of these complaints kind of fall apart very quickly because I discovered that FlashForge has in their creator line another 3D printer that is bigger, that has independent dual extruders, and those extruders are easier to replace. In addition to a number of other additions, they called that one the FlashForge Creator S. And it's $3,500. Wait, hold on. I brought a prop for this one. Okay, Flash Forge, you made your point. New hardware, different hardware, costs extra. Okay, totally fair. But that said, I feel like somebody in marketing messed up. That one should have been called the Max. This one should have been called the S. So in the end, am I just complaining about the name? Well, if we take those complaints and get them off the table, there are still a handful of little designs that I don't think would cost any new hardware. A lot of them are software or firmware changes, but I think would be very valuable. This next part really goes out to Flash Forge. I, I kind of hope that future versions of this, maybe a Max 2, which would be like Final Fantasy 14, right? It just keeps going when they called it the Max. Never mind. I think that later versions should do let me tell you about it 
Number one, the power switch is on the other side of the power cable. So you need to reach over the power connector to turn it off and on. Now that's not a big deal for people with freakishly long fingers like I do. But if you've got little baby sausage hands, yeah, that could kind of be a pain in the neck. Just taking that connector and flipping it over so the power switch is more accessible or even better, I, I don't know, this is additional hardware, but moving a power switch to the front, I think would be a great choice. Also, the SD card holder is on the side and it's kind of far around the side. Now, I understand the front and the back because we got the filament and we got the interface, but why, why do I need, I should be able to notch this in right next to another 3D printer and not have to worry about it, but no, I got to reach around the side and it's, it's in a kind of just a little bit further back than you expect every time. And then there's also the USB connector there. So I keep trying to stick the SD card into USB connector. I think it would be great if the SD card were up front where we could easily see it and take it in and put it out. It's a minor niggle, but you know, please, if you're doing a small redesign, could you do that? Now, there's a couple of things on the firmware. For instance, why can't I have Wi-Fi and SD card printing on at the same time? I mean, you made it work on the Adventure 3. Why can't you make it work here? Why do I have to turn off Wi-Fi if I'm gonna print on the SD card? I don't have to deal with that on the Adventure 3. On the Adventure 3, everything that you print gets copied over to local storage and then it just prints from local storage, which I think is genius because then if you bring it in onto Wi-Fi, it also just gets stored on local storage and it all comes through the same print process. Although I will say on the Adventure 3 and if you implement that on here, which I hope you do, can we have a button to just clear the internal memory of everything? It's kind of a pain having to go through and say, no, delete, 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 delete. Now, interestingly enough, this print head only has one fan on it and it's on the left extruder. Now, that's not a big deal. And you seem to think that that fan is powerful enough to blow across both of them. You call it some sort of power vortex fan or something. But in my experience, PLA, which let's be honest, everybody's printing with mostly right now, prints better on the left extruder but in the flash print software, the right extruder is the default extruder for any model that we bring in. And so that means that I have to remember to manually move it over to the left extruder if I'm using PLA, which again, I am most of the time. Can we get that changed into software or at least put somewhere in the software where I can tell it, hey, by default, import things onto the left extruder. That'd be great. You know, filament out detection would be great. Again, you got it on the Adventure 3. I, I recognize that's new hardware and it is on the S. So I'm not complaining, but I would love that. And, you know, talking about things that I would love, I would pay money if I could get an upgrade that would allow me to remove the build plate so I can pop prints off just like I do on the Adventure 3. I, I, I keep on saying like, oh, well, the Adventure 3 has this, so do really is what I want is an Adventure 3 that's a little bit wider and has dual extruders and direct drive. Okay, you know what? Fair, there's, there's a lot more here than just a Adventure 3 Plus. But still, you got it. Why doesn't this have it? And the last thing, and I, I recognize that again, this is additional hardware and does the S have something like this, but why am I having to level things with a piece of paper? You know, the we do folks who took this design and iterated it, they figured out how to put a little sensor on there and what they did, I really love, they bring the build plate up, they bring the sensor to the right spot and then they tell you, hey, turn this knob to the left and when you get it right, it screams at you to stop and then moves the build plate and moves the head to the next spot and tells you to move that head and screams at you to stop. It's an assisted leveling, but it's it, it allows me to have knowledge that I'm precise in it. I mean, right? All of these complaints are basically me saying, why can't this machine be more like other machines? But if I strip those away, does this machine work as intended? Well, yeah, and it works really, 
really good. This is a tried and tested design that has been, sure, iterated over the years, but overall has a very strong core and is capable of doing multi-material prints, dual head prints, which are a lot of fun, but also different materials and, and putting them together. And because it's dual nozzled, not both of them going into one nozzle, there's no purge block. There's no need to worry about any of that stuff. Oh, and I forgot to mention the enclosure. This thing is completely enclosed. So you could use it in a shop where you've got sawdust and stuff flying around. There's, it's a little bit open in the back, but it's mostly protected. It doesn't have an outflow fan with a HEPA filter on it. Again, I'm complaining, but what it does have is so perfectly serviceable and enables you to do so many cool things. And that's why, despite the fact that this list of mine kept growing and growing, overall, I couldn't complain about the machine because it was exactly what it needed to be to get the job done and it gets that job done extremely, extremely well. Is it perfect? No. Could it be better? Well, yes, but then again, there's the S for that. And honestly, the biggest praise that I can give this machine is that I just, not only have I been printing constantly with it to the point where I just haven't had time to slow down, but as soon as I get this on the shelf back here, I'm gonna start up another print. I've got it loaded up on the SD card, ready to go. This machine is gonna stay busy. If you want to be able to play with multiple materials, if you want to play with dissolvable supports, if you want to have a 3D printer good for experimenting, this is a great machine. This isn't a machine that you give to the kids. That's what the Adventure 3 is for. And it might not be the best machine if you're going to be 3D printing cosplay like helmets or stuff like that. For that, you're gonna want a larger format 3D printer. But if you are into basically advancing material science in 3D printing, then yes, I can absolutely recommend the FlashForge Creator Max. Could we redo that name though? Could we, could we maybe just like have a, a, a media thing? I mean, like they retconned Ang Lee's The Hulk and, and JG Aurora is now JG Maker. I, I, I'm of the opinion that anything's possible. Let's call this one the S and that one the Max, huh? Well, I've got to get this machine on the shelf and get it started printing again, as well as I need to fire up my soul scanner and do a scan so that I can make an upgrade for this. But I really appreciate you hanging out with me for a couple of minutes today. Uh, speaking of hanging out with me, did you know that I have another YouTube channel, 3DP Professor Live, where I'm going to be uploading live content. I've got a new show coming up that I think you guys are really going to like. I'm going to take amazing people who have done amazing things and I'm going to play Minecraft with them. It's called Makers and Minecraft and I hope that you guys will join me there. And uh, subscribe to that channel, ring the bell if you haven't already, but thank you guys very much. That needed to be cleaned, didn't it?